J'entends jouer l'orchestre d'un paquebot qui sombre Entraînant notre histoire et la mémoire des vieux Où sont les étonnés, les jaloux, les peureux Où sont les insolents, les rusés, les heureux Où sont les hommes Des chemins qui menaient à Rome Enfant du néant, du hasard Et d'un cri d'amour quelque part Retenu par le temps qui dure Au fond d'une prison sans mur Je sais que le ciel ne m'attend pas Ni Dieu, ni diable, mais au-delà Une idée folle, une idée d'homme De ceux qui s'en allaient à Rome J'entends jouer l'orchestre d'un qui sombre Entraînant notre histoire et la mémoire des vieux Où sont les résignés, les errants, les curieux Où sont les indignés, les violents, les furieux Où sont les hommes Nous sommes des passants illusoires Sur des chemins qui vont nulle part Retenus par des liens obscurs À des éternités futures Je sais que le ciel n'est pas si haut Ni bien ni mal, ni laid ni beau Une idée folle, une idée d'homme De ceux qui s'en allaient Entraînant notre histoire
Here is a rapid depiction of the movie, commented by a panel of experts. He is one of my all-time favorite guests. He is a Renaissance man, astrophysicist, cosmologist, science commentator, TV host. The opening scene gives an overview of the contents of the movie. It's a tour of the solar system and its planets through documentaries, GIFs, and realistic cinematic depictions. Go ahead. A commemoration of the moon landings and a pinup from Globe Cosmos. A satellite projection and snippets of the movie Apollo 18. That's a recipe for disaster. Roading over planet Mars to fulfill human curiosity. Whatever is your concept, the discoveries of astrophysicists bring you closer to it. The moon remains the only planet or celestial body that mankind has set foot upon it. NASA has a plan to build something called the Lunar Gateway, which will orbit the moon as a spacecraft and allow astronauts to shuttle back up and down from the surface. There's a real sense of hope in the community that we are within 10 years of putting people back there. Kicking off the exploration of the outer solar system. 2020 as they sail into the record books. But there was one outer planet that they didn't visit. We miss Pluto because Pluto is a little bit out of the plane of the planets. So Voyager 2, which had to stay in the plane to go by Uranus and Neptune, could not visit Pluto. And Voyager 1, which could have, it was going up at the wrong angle. And that meant that we could not go on to Pluto. A reminder from Black Cosmos of the hardships of early space conquest. Gagarin was out in space and the Earth could see him. All this was being done for the first time. The flight itself, Cosmovision, the pictures of the stellar world, and the view of the Earth from space. Gagarin stayed in space 108 minutes an artist impression of an astronaut discovering Sojourner, the theme masterfully explored in the movie The Martian. That's right. That's right. I'm gonna have to science the shit out of this. The Martian, where the protagonist survives, not on wit, prayer, or hope, but on sciencing the shit out of everything. Frozen views of planetary-sized objects in the far-flung reaches of the solar system. Visual animation depicts the lunar walk extracted from the movie Apollo 18. Mil chosen for portraying accurately EVS to know the appearance of the Soviet proposed LK lunar lander. Why do we keep booking guests like this? Snippets of the movie The Martian. Depiction of Pluto's surface APBS production with an Indian launcher in the background. And then uh, at the very edge, the outer edge of this system of uh, planets, we deal with Pluto. And Pluto is not really like a terrestrial planet. Uh, because it's uh, got quite a bit of ice in it. Uh, Pluto is not at all like a giant planet because it's tiny and it's not made of gas, it's made of solid material. And it also has a very strange orbit with a high vorticity and a high inclination. It's tilted up. Bill, a long promenade on Mars with the outstanding rover's curiosity, spirit and opportunity, with also extracts from the Martian. To me, we've already followed the water. We know there's water on Mars. Check on the water. The next thing we need to do in terms of the strategy for life search is follow the organics. Find organics. We have come a long way in meeting our neighbor next door. Parent satellite of Pluto forming almost a twin planet at the edges of the solar system is portrayed in the background. Dreaming of exploring the seas of Europa to discover life, the real project on the internet.
Do not fear mistakes. Jupiter the planet with sumptuous aura borealis, its gargantuan magnetic field that envelopes all its moons, the strange volcanoes of Io, the underground seas of Europa, Ganymede and Gallus to make Jupiter a mini solar system of its own. The gravitational stress on Europa from Jupiter and other surrounding moons is pumping energy into it, much the same way when you warm up a racquetball by hitting it. You distort it, it bounces back to shape, you're pumping energy into it. That has melted the interior ice. It has had an ocean of liquid water that's been liquid for billions of years. And every place on Earth we find liquid water, we have found life. I want to go ice fishing on Europa. <laughs> Lower submersible. Alex is uh, coming to us from Earth, and Alex says, um, hey, I just turned 30. Uh, hey, happy birthday, man. Uh, how feasible is it in my lifetime to see people land on Europa? Now, I, I suppose he's singing, using uh, the average lifespan because we don't know. Alex could be hit by a bus next week. You know, that's not what? 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 <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's the life expectancy he's planning for this question. Okay, you're right. <laughs> okay, there's a movie called The Europa Report, which is about the man man's first mission to Europa. Nice. And so and they and they want to look for life there. Good morning. I'm very we are all very excited to be here today. This really is a new first step for mankind. I would hope we keep looking for the answers to those really tough questions. Who are we? Where do we come from? And are we alone? Internal cam check is a go. Our craft was heading for a moon of Jupiter, known as Europa. Yeah, my boy's gonna be six when I see him again. He's gonna be proud of you. Oxygen is flowing, we're good. Commencing egress. He's never gets old. We are clear of Jupiter's orbit. Pitching for power descent. Ladies and gentlemen, hold on. Here we go. I can't believe I'm here. This is incredible. So now it will be possible, instead of landing there and building some exotic drill and declaring the whole mission way too expensive to ever do, you would build a much more modest spacecraft that would have to go the extraordinary distance out to Jupiter and get an orbit out there around Europa, but you would have it fly through the geysers. Actually, the orbit would be around Jupiter. Have it fly through the geysers and like looking at bugs on the windshield. I mean, it would be extraordinary if there are living things there. This has been determined using magnetometers and spectrometers on the Galileo spacecraft, which has been in orbit out there for a long time. But Europa has seawater, squirting it into space. We could send a relatively inexpensive mission, uh, and that's a relatively inexpensive is $2 billion. But $2 billion spread over 10 years is barely the cup of coffee per taxpayer once, and that pays for the whole mission over 10 years. And my feeling is people buy a lot more than one cup of coffee every 10 years. Revealing the splendor of Saturn. And, and let, me, let me just remind people that why, why we've gone so goo goo gaga over Enceladus. And yes. that is because we found um, that it has 101 tall geysers that are erupting from its south polar terrain, which is an area, if you were to scale Enceladus up to the size of the Earth, it would be like the latitude of Tierra del Fuego and everything south. Wow. Or if you were biased towards the northern hemisphere, it would be like Sc uh, Edinburgh, Scotland, and everything north. Wow. So imagine having 101 enormous geysers erupting from the terrain that's that large. And once we found with Cassini these geysers, and we knew that the, with the particles that we see in our images were accompanied by vapor, right. and they formed this enormous plume that went ultimately tens of thousands of kilometers 
uh, into orbit around Saturn, we took Cassini and we went barreling through it. Right. We went barreling through it time and time and time again. And we've been able to collect material and measure the contents of the vapor, measure the contents of the particles, measure the characteristics of the particles, how big they are, how their size is distributed above the surface. And all this information has finally told us where we are right now. We know we have a global ocean under about 35 kilometers worth of ice. Okay. It's salty. It's it's salty like the Earth's ocean wow. is salty. And it has... Uh, uh, organic material. So it's got all the formal requirements of what in the NASA world, the NASA universe, we call a habitable zone. And that ocean is accessible now. What we have to do is fly through it again with the proper instruments, right. better than we have on Cassini, to measure uh, uh, measure it at a, a, with a greater precision and ask, start asking really interesting astrobiological questions. Overflying Neptune with snippets of the feature movies Gravity and Salute 7. By the way, the total satellite destruction scenario, it's real. One satellite can take out 10, they each take out another 10, go from 1 to 10 to 100 to 1,000 in a matter of days. You could maybe a month. Total satellite destruction if you go around smashing satellites. Don't do it. Oh, another thing, by the way. Sandra Bullock randomly comes out of orbit, and she lands in a pond and just swims to shore. Excuse me, most places on Earth you'll land, you are near no shore at all. You're going to drop in the middle of the Pacific or in the Arctic, and you'll be eaten by sharks in the ocean, or a polar bear will eat you in the Arctic. Something bad is going to happen to you. You're not going to just crawl out and sit on land and say, boy, I had a, I had a long day. You know, I got in big trouble when I sent out some tweets about gravity. I just thought people would be interested to know what they didn't get right. In fact, I didn't even say they got it wrong. I just said these were mysteries of the movie. Why is it that Sandra Bullock, a medical doctor, is repairing the Hubble Space Telescope? Excuse me, we don't send medical doctors to repair the Hubble Space Telescope any more than we're, than we're going to send a mechanical engineer to do open heart surgery on you. Please. Okay, so I tweeted that. And they might have had a little emotional flavor to it, but still. What I didn't tweet were the hundred things it got right. I celebrate the movie for its effort to get so much right. It's unfortunate that my initial salvo of tweets were interpreted as me somehow not liking the movie. I enjoyed the movie immensely. Largely depicting series, the dwarf planet and the asteroid belt with cryovolcanoes, mountains and possible vast reserves of underground water. Ceres is a choice objective in the future exploration of our solar system. Is it the same kind of brine on Mars? Interesting question. The answer is, it appears no, that the chemistry is different. The Ceres brines seem to have these ammonia and sodium carbonates, these really alkaline, sodic, high pH uh, materials that are like Searles Lake and like Enceladus. On Mars, most of the evidence for brines that we've seen so far have been like chloride brines, like think salt like our ocean water salt, or have been sulfate brines, like, like when you get a lot of evaporation, you sometimes get sulfate. So, so far it looks like the chemistry is actually kind of different, and that's maybe saying something. A brief visit to the International Space Station, which is still our only space platform in low Earth orbit. Hey, what's that? I think that's a Soyuz spacecraft. That's the spacecraft that's taken us home to planet Earth today. Oh my gosh. We might have to go take a look at that. That's pretty cool. It's a little bit smaller than the rest of uh, the spacecraft, the space station. So you'll see um, if we go there, it will be a little bit more crammed. But we're going, you can look all the way back to the back of the spacecraft, which is where the Russian segment is. And then you could look all the way forward to uh, the front of the spacecraft. Involved first developing a human-rated rocket and spacecraft, orbiting Tiangong Space Labs as test beds, and finally constructing a modular space station in low Earth orbit. China launched the first Long March 2F rocket with an uncrewed test Shenzhou spacecraft in 1999. In 2003, Yang Liwei became the first Chinese astronaut in space aboard Shenzhou 5. Tiangong 1 was launched in 2011. Tiangong 2, Shenzhou 11 and Tianzhou 1 further verified systems 
and China is now looking to begin constructing the Chinese Space Station or CSS. Once completed, the 60-ton CSS is expected to be operational for at least 10 years. The core module, Tianhe, is the first of three 20 metric tons. Showing just how important Mars is with its plethora of probes which are successfully continuing the exploration. Exploring Jupiter with Galileo. Tops and in space, more telescopes were trained on the same part of the sky than ever before. As the comet approached, Jupiter's massive gravity tore it to pieces. Twenty separate fragments would strike the planet, some more than a kilometer and a half across. Astronomers across the globe were about to witness something amazing. One by one, the fragments hit. The largest released as much energy as 300 million atomic bombs. A fireball shot 3,000 kilometers above the top of Jupiter's clouds. Homage to the Voyagers. Arguably the most successful space probes launched by mankind. The Voyagers explored all the giant planets of the outer solar system. From 1977 to 1989 both probes accomplished stunning flybys of the gas giants Jupiter and Saturn also exploring the icy giants Uranus and Neptune. The Voyagers are still at this date continuing their mission of exploration being the first man-made object to leave the solar system. In the 1960s, a grand planetary tour to study the outer planets was proposed. It was an ambitious plan to send unmanned probes to the outer planets of the outer solar system. The Grand Tour could exploit a rare, unusual, and favorable alignment of the planets Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. This planetary alignment would occur in the late 1970s and would not occur again for 176 years. So the Twin Voyager spacecrafts 1 and 2 were launched in 1977 to take advantage of this special planetary alignment. It would allow a probe to be sent to Jupiter and use that planet as a gravitational slingshot to extend the trajectory to the other planets further out in the solar system. The primary mission of the Voyager spacecrafts was the exploration of Jupiter and Saturn. After making a series of outstanding discoveries, the mission was extended. Voyager 2 went on to explore Uranus and Neptune and is still the only spacecraft to have visited those outer planets. Always we will remember the heroes who gave their existence for men to finally reach to the stars. It was a bitter cold but sparkling clear morning at Cape Canaveral. Here at the last seconds of the countdown. Three, two, one, and liftoff. Liftoff of the 25th Space Shuttle mission and it has cleared the tower. All the communications between the shuttle and mission control indicated everything was going fine. There was a sense of relief that the much delayed flight was finally underway. Engines at 65 percent, three engines uh, running normally, three good fuel cells, three good APUs. Engines throttling up, three engines now at 104 percent. Challenger, go with throttle up. Challenger, go with throttle up. It happened just over one minute into flight. Velocity 2,900 feet per second, altitude 9 nautical miles, downrange distance 7 nautical miles. From mission control, silence. Then the bland, chilling report. We have a report from the flight dynamics officer that the vehicle has exploded. Instead of the habitual fact, we will have a FNAQ which translate infrequently, not answered questions.
FNS number 1. What is the story behind the presentation? The documentary, movie, musical gift, call it what you like, was originally created during the COVID period and the more the lockdown was extended. And so the movie. Second FNS. Question. Who is the person appearing so often and why? At the beginning the GIF movie was put together as a private presentation on the theme, that's how much I love space, then with time it was decided to post it on YouTube and other platform and so it was decided not to make any amendments to the original creation. Third question. Why create a movie made of GIFs? Answer. Because we can. Fourth common, frequently not answered question. How many gifts does the movie contains? The movie A GIF Walk in the Solar System contains 437 different gifts lasting from few seconds to several minutes. Fifth, FN question Why did you include fantasy science fiction and real space exploration footage? All the movies we included or at least the extracts have a touch of reality and give a feeling of what could be Mars exploration for instance. The last frequently not answered question is, will you do another one? Answer, it is not in the actual pipeline, however what is in the pipeline is short series on space exploration and space news brought to you by Astrid Verber Julia. We hope that you enjoy the GIF walk in the solar system despite the little mistakes here and there and wish to see you again on the Astrid Verber Julia channel. Feel free to subscribe. Thank you for watching. Both Forbox and Humans were entertained making this GIF movie. We hope you enjoyed it.